So here's my tower in the middle of my bridge. It's a great looking tower and it's 75 yards high. Don't get thrown off by the fact that this is an, an imperial because uh, it just doesn't really matter. The angle of elevation for the wire is anchored to the top of the tower is 42 degrees. So if I take my wire, draw it, it says the angle of elevation, so this angle here is 42 degrees. The question isn't asking for how far is the anchor, uh, sorry, the, the wire anchored away from the, the guy wire. It's asking how long is the wire? So I'm gonna call that X, because I don't know what it is. And that's what I'm trying to find, how long the wire is. Okay. We're gonna treat this like any other problem we've done so far. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just draw in a little 90 degree angle here. And I could maybe just highlight my triangle here in green, although it's not gonna show up super well. But I do have a right angle triangle. So there we go, there's my right angle triangle. If I think about the longest side or the side that is across from my 90 degree angle, that's gonna be my hypotenuse. And then I have my angle, which is 42, and if I went straight opposite that, I end up with my opposite side, which is the 75. And then I have the adjacent side down here at the bottom. I don't know it, I'm not trying to find it, so I don't really care about it. It does look like the Vancouver Bridge before they opened it, and I would think it would be the Vancouver Bridge. Is that the new Port Man, is that what it's called? I'm not a lower mainland kind of person. Taylor, you live in the coast. Is that the Port Man or the something else? Golden Ears? Yes, Port Man, perfect. All right, I go back to Sokotoa. Sokotoa. I have my opposite. I have my hypotenuse, I'm trying to find it. So opposite and hypotenuse is the sign. And we're in the sign section, so that makes sense. So the sine of my angle is going to be the opposite length divided by the hypotenuse. Okay, the angle I have here is 42 degrees, so I'm gonna plug that in. So I'm gonna take the sine of 42 degrees. The opposite is 75 yards, and I don't know what the hypotenuse is, but I'm gonna find it. Now, so far we've done this calculation in two steps, getting the x to the top and then moving the sine 42 to the other side. I'm gonna show you something you might have learned before. If this just confuses you, I'll do it uh, both ways. Put a little squiggle here. If you think of the sine 42 as being over one, what we can do is cross multiply. I have a feeling probably some of you have seen cross multiplication before. What we do is we take the top of this side and multiply it by the bottom of that side, and we take the top of this side, and we multiply it by the bottom of the other side. Do you wanna give me like a yes, I've seen cross multiplication before, or no? Just so I kinda of have a bit of a reference for how we're doing on this stuff. Yeah. Uh, last year, yes, yes. Cool, I think some of you have probably seen it. Anyways. Let's just, uh, let's do it. So we're gonna get the x times the sine of 42. Forty two degrees is equal to 75 yards times one. So if that makes sense, perfect. If it doesn't, that's fine. I'll do it the other way as well, here in a second. Uh, I'm gonna divide both sides by the sine of 42 degrees. And remember the 75 times one on the top is just 75, so that's not gonna be anything to be too concerned about. 
Sine 42 divided by sine 42 is just going to give me 1. I'm going to end up with x is 75 divided by the sine of 42 degrees. And I'm going to plug that into my calculator and figure out what it is. Sine, I go 75 divided by sine 42. This is where having a sort of newer calculator makes life a little bit easier. What did it ask for the nearest hundredth of a yard? So 112 point, there's my tenths, 09 yards. If you have a backwards calculator, I'm not saying it's like backwards is a bad thing, it's just it wants you to put in the angle and then hit the, the sign and then go from there. You're gonna have to probably do it in sort of two steps in your calculator. You'd have to go 42 sine, figure out what that is, write it down, and then go 75 divided by, and then plug the other number that you just calculated in. Uh, you got 0 0.6691. Now, we're trying to figure out the length of this wire, and we know the tower is 75 yards tall. So we know that if we ended up with 0 0.6691, that we probably, um, oh, unless you're talking about the sine of 42 degrees is, I think that may be what you're saying there, Taylor. Yeah, so perfect. I could write it as a, step, a second step here. I can just maybe squeeze it in, 75 divided by point. 6691. So you just need to go 75 divided by that and you end up with the 112. I said I was going to do this the other way. So if we have sine 42 degrees is 75 divided by x, I'm going to multiply both sides by x. So I get x times the sine 42 degrees is 75 because x and x divide out to give me 1. And then I'm going to divide everything by the sine of 42. You can see that essentially they're the same steps. But just kind of a different way to think about it. And 75, but sine 42, and I said I got point divided. Hmm. Uh, it might be just how you need to enter things into your calculator, Taylor. You'll probably need to maybe do it in two steps instead of one. Uh, your calculator probably isn't remembering the division. It's just you might have to hit enter again, perhaps. Um, again, it's just kind of mastering your calculator. Everybody's going to be a bit different with that regard. Okay. Uh, so that's sign. Maybe I'm going to just jump into the cosine extra practice. Is there anything that, um, before I do that, is there anything that anybody's confused about, you know, not understanding, something I mentioned in the lesson that didn't make sense? Uh, we can, okay, hitting it twice works. Perfect, that's good. Uh, so again, kind of the battle here is learning how to use your calculator sometimes, which seems kind of weird, but uh, that just... Kind of how it works. So stuff from the lesson, things you wanted to go through. If not, I'll just do a couple more problems from the, the cosine. And then uh, I'll give you guys some time to work on the learning guide. I don't see anybody. Oh, maybe Abby has a question. Could you remind me when to use the negative one and when to use the regular one? It's a good question. When we use the negative one or the inverse sine or tangent or cosine, it's when we're finding the angle. So if you think kind of back to the, if we look at the, some of these tables, I think the tangent one was a little bit bigger from yesterday. Your calculator needs to be told that, hey, I'm giving you a ratio of sides. I need you to give me an angle. Because when you hit the sine button on your calculator or the tangent or the cosine, all your calculator does is say, okay, I'm going to get an input of a ratio of sides. So the, it's thinking it's give it, getting this column, this like ratio column, and then it's going to spit out, sorry, 
your calculator thinks it's getting an angle and it's gonna spit out a ratio at you. If you wanted to do the opposite, if you want your calculator to think backwards, you need to say, okay, calculator, I'm not giving you an angle this time. I'm giving you a ratio of sides and you need to give me the angle. So you're telling your calculator, you're giving it the ratio and you need the angle. So if you're trying to find an angle, you're gonna use the inverse. If you're using, if you're um, trying to find the side length, you already have an angle, so you're just going to put the angle in. Calculators like, um, yeah, just leave it at that before I confuse myself or you any further. Uh, yeah, I can give you, I guess you guys have about half an hour right now to, um, you can do the learning guide up to the end of page four is uh, what I'd like you guys to work on. I'm just gonna look at maybe one question from the cosine, extra practice, and then you guys can have the last sort of 20 minutes to uh, work away on this stuff. Give you some time. So given the following lengths of right triangle, find the unknown angle to the nearest hundredth. For homework, sorry, uh, for homework you're gonna watch the third video, yeah, the third, the third video for homework, we're gonna spend some time doing the questions in class next day. Then we'll probably do a review type day on maybe Monday and then you guys could do the test on Tuesday next week, hopefully. All right, let's just do number 5A here real quick and then I will let you guys have some time to work. My 90 degree angle is here. That makes this my hypotenuse, which is also the longest side. You can see I have theta here, which is the angle I'm trying to find. This question asks, if I go to the opposite side, that's right there, and then I'm given this eight, which forms the angle with the hypotenuse, that gives us the adjacent side. Okay, in the question I have, the hypotenuse is given as 11, I have eight as the adjacent, and the opposite I don't have, and I'm not trying to find. So if I think back to Sokotoa, what am I doing? I have the hypotenuse, and I have the adjacent. So I'm using my cosine, So the cosine of my angle, which I'm trying to find, is going to be the length of the adjacent side divided by the length of the hypotenuse. I'm gonna plug all the information in. I don't know what the angle is, that's what I'm trying to find. The adjacent side has a length of eight, and the hypotenuse has a length of 11. I'm gonna just maybe do some different notation here. I'm trying to find the angle which is the inverse cosine, because I'm trying to find an angle of eight over 11. See if you can plug it into your calculator that way, if you can figure out how to do it on your calculator. Some of you, if you have an older school calculator, you might have to go eight divided by 11, and then go inverse cos, or second cos, or shift cos. Uh, my calculator is a little bit newer, so I can go second cosine, and eight divided by 11, if I put the eight and 11 in brackets in my calculator, I'm gonna end up with 43.34 degrees. One problem that you're gonna run into with your calculator is if you go uh, inverse cosine and then you hit the eight button, what your calculator thinks is, okay, take the inverse cos of eight and then I'm gonna divide that all by 11, which doesn't really work your calculator is not as smart as you. So when you do it, what you need to do is if you have a calculator that allows you to put in brackets, you put it in brackets. So inverse cos eight divided by 11 in brackets. You should end up with 43.34. Okie dokie. I'm gonna leave you guys there and I would like it if you would finish off the learning guide to the end of page four. You have about 
20 minutes to do that right now. Hopefully you've got a good sort of foundation understanding of this stuff. Reminders, uh, midterm number two, January 18th, Monday, Central Gym, nine o'clock. There is essentially one lesson left. It's kind of the where everything comes together for this trig stuff. So watch the video, the third video uh, from the course. Bring it up here. There's one, two, and three. So math eight, uh, lesson number three, unit eight, lesson three. Uh, you can watch that for homework. We'll spend some time doing problems the next day. And that's kind of it for this stuff. So thanks, guys. Uh, we have math help today. If you want to come in, Mrs. Parker and myself will be available from 1 to 3. And hopefully you guys come uh, snowshoeing, not snowshoeing, cross-country skiing on Friday. Have a good one. We'll see you tomorrow.